President of the Institute of Directors, the Management Committee members and the Chairman of the Institute of Directors, Tamil Nadu Chapter, distinguished guests, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure and privilege for me to be an integral part of this interesting and exciting inauguration. Conceptually, the theme set in, in terms of governance has been telling story in real order. Global governance has plays a, played a big role with the changing face of the world. The world is changing on account of globalization. The world is also changing on account of re-regulation. What was once described as deregulation has become re-regulation. Technology and consumerism is setting new boundaries. The world is becoming one single village, integrated, interdependent, more than ever. Communism has changed form and substance. Capitalism is altercating its, its form. And again, mixed economies are redefining the scope and performance. Financial economies are redefining as real. Real economies are again changing their business model. Conceptually, we are in the critical transformational mode. That's the world I see. I run an enterprise global, 16 countries, seeing the world time and again, meeting the corporates time and again. Professional responsibility is getting into substance in multiple form and culture. That's how I see. What has changed in the last five years? What was once described as liquidity has moved into a funding. Funding crisis has become solvency crisis and sovereign crisis. America is still reeling under pressure. Accommodative monetary policy alone cannot fix the developmental growth. Global growth today has been influenced predominantly by monetary policy. Fiscal policy and monetary policy has to align to have global growth. Conceptually, the world at large has seen inflated world. Printing money, improving the liquidity, inflating the market as reflected in stock market, currency market. You weaken the currency to create a trade war. That doesn't mean the world at large has got real growth. Advanced economies are still reeling under pressure. Today, as we speak, we have Federal Reserve Chairperson is going to address Jackson Hole. If you see the mixed messages which we are getting around the world, interpreting in their own form, essentially endangering sustainability at large. The reflection is there only on the liquidity. Interest rates are likely to improve. Unemployment is getting to some mode of normalcy. And again, if you look at America, housing market still highly volatile in substance. Stock market has reached the peak highly over leveraged. If you look at the Europe, as a design, it's an error. As a birth, it's a deformity. When the monetary policy is centralized, fiscal policy is getting decentralized. We have seen the reflection, countries and continents, individuals and institutions who are live beyond their means have to redefine their goals. They have to come to terms. Gross to GDP as set in by monetary criteria has to be practiced. Europe is in, in deep trouble. When you look at the emerging economies, which produces more than 60% of the global incremental growth, it's not without reorganization. We are interdependence. Today, when America is setting the tone for QE tapering, we got decelerated. Emerging markets, ever since the bond buying program has been put to, been planning to put to rest, we have seen the deceleration in the currency, in the commodity market, and again, stock market. We live in gambling grounds. If America can print money, if Europe can print money, European Central Bank can print money, United King Kingdom can print money, why not Japan? That's precisely what we have seen economics last year. Just to inflate the economy, weakening the currency, 
inflating the trade momentum, they have reflected trillions of yens put into money market operations, open market operations. We have seen the effect positively. To a large extent, inflation was coming to terms. Japan was pulling out of its recessions. That doesn't mean global growth is sustainable. Global growth is going to have normalcy. If you look at the financial markets, while I said the stock market is a reflection of inflation, housing market, if you look at it, it's again asset price inflation has been visible world over. India is not an exception. Currency market is completely manipulated. It is an administered system. Why do you create a currency war, as I said, to create a trade war? Countries which are engaged in trade exploration, export is the main driver, they have to weaken the currency. Chinese have done for 30 years. They have fixed the currency. They saw the export. They reorganized their positions in global ranking, and they have earned a lot. Their extraordinary financial stability is on account of currency mechanism. If you look at countries who are subject to free market dynamics, like India, you are interdependent, interconnected. And again, clearly, you have to wait for the world central bankers to set tones for your domestic agenda. That's the world we are in. Why connect all these things to board practices? You are not independent of global governance when it comes to corporate governance. Corporate governance and global governance are intertwined in a world which is centralized. Again, one world. While it's connected with Facebook and Twitter, breaking news, people are not location-centric. They are information-centric. They know things are changing with interconnectivity. That's the world we're in. How do you define your monetary policy and fiscal policy? How do you define your bringing stability to financial systems? How do you make sure your growth is projected in real order? There's no solution to it. Still, we are contemplating options which was set in in G20. It was not confined to America alone. The infection transcended borders, infected the real economies, and real economies are facing the pressure. It is not Lehman Brothers and Bass Tents. It is today we are seeing J.P. Morgan has paid after five years, 31 billion in total. It was whale trading. Credit default swappers generated over six billion. Housing mortgage, again, there is an issue by the regulators. They charged 13 billion. Bernie Madoff, again, he defrauded the world. It costed two billion. 21 billion was paid by J.P. Morgan. It's not confined to J.P. Morgan alone. It is HSBC. And again, if you look at the, the kind of money laundering they engaged in, Colombian colleague to Mexican fraudsters, they paid a heavy price. Standard Chartered, Sudan or Iran, the sanctioned countries have been dealt with by Standard Chartered. They paid a heavy price. UBS, Credit Suisse, they were hoarding accounts of multi-trillions of taxable entity. Today, do you trust them? Financial institutions have lost their credibility because they lost their governance. Intertwining, the light switch regulation has failed. The auditors have failed. The rating agencies have failed. Analysts have failed. Investment banks took their triple A rated, guilted securities, rating agencies. How do you trust them? How do you trust this kind of practice? They infected structured products world over. That's a reflection we have seen the financial crisis. Is it over? It is not. That's the reality. If you look at the real order, real economies are trying to interpret in multiple form and substance and trying to bring in policy frameworks to sustain. That's not fixed. G7 has become G8. G8 has become G20. G20 came with clear suggestions. Politicians, economists, bankers, they got together way back in April 2009 in London. They said, 
we will bring in re-regulations. Global governance will change. We will fix the hedge fund holders. We will fix the supervisory framework. Supervisory systems is not light switch. It's a systemic risk has been the failure. So they set in clear order. Tax havens, so-called tax havens, are nothing but tax evasions. And those were driving the, the wall. The parallel systems, countries like India. What is not there in India? Go and see the world and come to India. I've, I've punched 92 stamps in my passport, 92 countries. I've seen the reflection of India. India is the country today. This century belongs to Indians, let's face it. Our heritage, our culture, our civilization, our value system is, is second to none. Interpreting, <laughs> interpreting the econometric terms, this century ideally should belong to India. Look at the younger populations. Consumerism, what we cannot do. What we cannot do if we have global governance in real order. What we cannot do if we have corporate governance in substance. It's an extraordinary situation we are going through. Global governance is simply being manipulated. It's not politics, make no mistakes. Trillions of dollars, if it is hoarded, Parallel systems, if it is brought to justice, this country, GDP would have been different. In terms of global ranking, it's 16 trillion is America. Then comes China, 9 trillion. Then comes Japan. Then comes so-called G7, whether UK or Italy or Spain or name it, France. What's the Maastricht criteria? What is the GDP percentage set in for gross debt to GDP? 60%. Which country in the Maastricht Treaty, signed Treaty, has complied with it, except Germany? Look at the predicament. Unless we set in universal standard in terms of accounting, valuation, securitization, this crisis will not be over. Unless the global measurement mechanism come to terms to set in standards which are global, this crisis is not over. This is phase three of the financial crisis. Phase one was... It was just showcased two institutions in America, Lehman Brothers. Then it transcended borders. It's infected, brought it friendly to, again, Royal Bank of Scotland to name it. There are enough reasons for us to believe world and large has to transform in politics and economics. Unless politics and economics converge as single-minded vision, you don't get the real order. We are in a conversion mode. We are in a transitory mode. We are in a changing mode. That's the reflection we are seeing today. How do you govern your board practices unless you factor the global governance into your business practice? That's the positive side of the coin. The reflection of setting globalized world and globalized corporate management is to recognize you are not any more local. Your business model is no more local whether you run a private enterprise, whether you run a private bank, or a local bank, you are global, you are public. Your business model has to be conceived in tandem to set in universal standard to have a global benchmarks in terms of governance. That's what the, the change. That's what the, the reflection today. If you factor that, you set in standards which are meaningful. You set in missions which are conceptually global. You set in practices, policies, procedures, or process which are global. Institutions who have recognized this have transformed. They sustain their credibility as global institutions. They don't perform mercurially. They perform in terms of sustainable form and substance. They produce to all the stakeholders, its shareholders, its customers, its society at large, it is staff. Value streaming comes in only if you recognize this conception. That's what the changing phase is all about. Recognizing the, the changes in the global makeup, factoring into your corporate philosophy, corporate values and missions, comes into practice, then you have a change in hand. You have transformation in hand, you have value streaming in hand, and you have sustainability in terms of business modeling. That's what we are recognizing. 
That's what we understand. It is not few institutions goes burn out of order. The boardroom practices have to be conceptually clear. With the changing face of the world, factoring the global governance into the local practice. And conceptually, rework on the business modeling to ensure you draw a, a sustainable vision. The board comes to terms. Convergence of long-term vision and execution in terms of professional practice comes in with sustainable values. Look at the changes which are taking place in real order. The board practices have been changed in multiple forms. Today, board diversity, the president was talking about quality of the management, quality of the board in substance. That's getting recognized. Institutions today, as we speak, we have seen many institutions are in the crossroads. They, are, they have defrauded the public finance. They de defrauded the corporate ethics in India, everywhere in the world. But how do you change them? How do you transform them? Unless universal standards are coming in. If you say in banking, I can talk about Basel III. Basel III was set in with a clear conviction of you play with your own money. Capital rules have been redefined. When the global financial crisis was set in, we realized our balance sheet securitization was a bigger fraud. Institutions were mobilizing money, pub public money, by endangering their solvency, by undercapitalizing their institutions. They played with excess leveraging. That's why Lehman Brothers was 78 times. Even today, some of the well-known institutions, if you look at it, asset to shareholders' equity, they are excess leveraged. I'm not talking about India. India withstood 1997 financial crisis, currency crisis. India withstood the, the atomic bomb sanctions level, leveled by Americans. Post September 2001, we withstood in terms of financial stability. We withstood in terms of liquidity and profitability in 2008. Crisis has not disturbed us. But interconnectivity in the world is still killing the rest of the world. Those who are real are paying the real price. Those who are financial, those who are fabricating their policy framework are still sustaining it. It's not a criticism. It's a reality. Those who understand the substance can interpret in real order. There are elite and intelligent, articulate audience here. But the change has to come. You are the change. Corporate management is a change. Bringing sanity to the best practice is the change. You bring it by recognizing at a policy level. That's why, whether it is diversification, whether it is independence, whether it is governance, whether it is remuneration, that's, we can go on. The board practices has to come to terms for building excellence to the business model. These models are tested and proven. Good institutions are still performing. Good institutions are still sustaining its credibility. We have bigger challenges to recognize we are an integral part of the social fabric. That's why Institute of Directors has been an integral part of such functional makeup. I've been associated with them over the years. Portugal to London, I've been an integral part of their conferences time and again. And always showcase only my experience and recognizing how we need to cleanse the system, how we need to recognize financial economies or finan institutions have to become real. Individuals, if you're real, you're fit and solid. If you're faulty, you're fabricating a knowledge base. The practice has to come by transformational policy making. That is precisely the reason I'm sure this board excellence and practice has been set in as a conceptual theme. I'm glad I'm an integral part of this interesting and exciting substance. We are here to recognize these changes are going to give long-term values. Look at the changes. Eradication of extreme poverty, bringing gender equality, ensuring environment sustainability. The world at large is changing extraordinary pace. Global warming is going to be a bigger crisis for the world. Food security is interconnected today. 
How do you alleviate poverty unless you recognize the food security? Unless you fix the climate change? World at large is recognizing now 6.8 billion is the population today. By 2050, you have 9.1 billion. You need 70% food production more. Who is going to do it? You and me have to do it today to make sure your children and grandchildren are still up. They have to be better than you and me. It means you factor corporate social responsibility as integral part of your functional makeup. Rising temperature, increasing weather conditions, endangering species. Look at animals are walking all over the villages in Tamil Nadu. Most polluted city, India is ranking three cities there out of ten. We have a lot to do. We have to get into biofuel. We have to get into renewables. You are importing inflation. How do you come time today? Indian inflation, unless you understand the dynamics of those variables. If currency gets weakened, people hedge the risk by buying commodity futures. Oil price goes up. It's not demand and supply. Currency manipulations reflect in, 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 in India, every part of the world. That's the reality. So the concept is getting redefined. The changes are happening. The changes which are happening is positive and constructive. The reflection is to recognize these changes from a global perspective and built in corporate social responsibility into your boardroom practices so that we build a good person. A good person makes good institutions. A group of good persons, good institutions make good society. A group of good society create good nation. A group of good nations create good United Nations. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention.